this is Terry the Technician and welcome to my LMT01 temperature sensor video. Today we'll be looking at a nifty little temperature sensor from Texas Instruments that's actually very easy to use. Let's get into it. And here is the start of my notes. We can see the um, temperature sensor. I'm using a TO92 package. The design of the temperature sensor is pretty clever actually because it it's only has two wires and it uses a constant current to differentiate between a 0 and a 1 and uh, so 34 microamps is a 0 and 125 microamps is a 1 we use a resistor to generate a voltage from this current level to turn on a transistor to provide a nice waveform which we'll see later on so the unit outputs one pulse as a minimum and 4095 pulses as a maximum. Each pulse has a weight of 0 0.0625 degrees C. As a technician I'm a bit skeptical about that but hopefully modern production and laser calibration actually provides some degree of accuracy. It's only designed to operate up to 150 C as you can see in the warning. Here's the TO92 package the picture you see there is about the actual size of the unit itself, it's tiny but it's got a couple of long leads which make it easy to use, easy to solder and the small size is a small thermal mass so it heats up pretty quick when you put your finger on it cools down pretty quick here's the output waveform but we'll duck over to the circuit first so I can explain what it is we're looking at I'm using an STM32 discovery board as usual. They're cheap, about 10 bucks. And perfect for four. Now, I've got a number of sensors shown here. In actual fact, only sensors one and two are in use. Sensors three is allowed for, but not there. And uh, the other sensors shown out there either but that's how you'd hook them up if you wanted them more theoretically you could hook up heaps I'm using port C, you could use any port you wanted um, here's the transistor that converts the small current into a much larger voltage swing the uh, 3 volt output from the discovery board is dropped through that resistor so as the transistor toggles we'll get a nice voltage swing from 0 to 3 volts going into port C0 which is configured as an input. The voltage is turned on to each sensor when we want to use it. We just switch the port to an output sender high and uh, that's all we need. <coughs> the units don't draw much current as we've seen it's dropped across this resistor and here's the calculated voltage outputs at 34 microamps we get about 0.23 volts which isn't enough to turn on the transistor it needs about 0.6 to do that and at 125 microamps we get about 0.85 volts across the base which the transistor will hold to about 0.7 volts there's the pinouts Pretty straightforward. Ducking back up to our waveform, we can see the voltage on the collector of Q1. It has a total swing of about 3 volts. And the time between pulses when it's free running, the sensor just outputs those pulses, groups of pulses, at about 10 hertz every 98 milliseconds. Here we've expanded a pulse a bit we can see on the pulse block width that um, each pulse is about 
15 milliseconds wide. That's it showing it just there. And here we drop down to show the that the uh, delayed time base so we've expanded each count or each pulse rather in that group of pulses they're about six microseconds wide not a bad little shape the 4k7 resistor I use to get that will allow a longer wire length than uh, perhaps just using the 30k internal pull up of the CPU it's a bit too high Okay, now down to the software. This is just a flowchart of how it works. We power up a particular sensor. We start the timing window, which is about 105 milliseconds wide. We count the pulses as the window closed. Keep going until it does close. We then power down the sensor. We check to see if the count is greater than zero. If it's not, we raise an alarm, the sensor is faulty or not present. If it is, we count the pulses and scale them for degrees C. And that's just basically the main procedure. It's pretty straightforward. The fourth code to implement it, also pretty straight, straightforward, although if you've never seen fourth before, you'll wonder what the hell it is. I've tried to comment everything extensively. You can be the judge of how well I've achieved that. It's all broken up into modules. That lot shows where we turn the power on and off to the sensors. The timer 6 is used for the window. It's interrupt driven, as is the port C0. So we have two interrupts in use. I'm not using any interrupt priority here. I'm not really familiar with that yet, but it seems to work fine. So there are two interrupt handlers, one for the actual pulses and one for the timer. There's the fault determination word. Here we have a little case um, word that just determines which sensor we're looking at based on its number. We've only catered for three but only the first two sensors are actually there. If you want, if you try and run more than sensor three, i.e. sensor four or above, you'll get the fall through which is no such sensor. Here's a test all program which I run just to test them. Runs through sensors one to four. It's multitasking so those who are there provide the multitasking. The whole operation of this is very smooth indeed. The terminal response is fast. It doesn't change while the, set, while the program is running and while you're sensing temperatures. And here we see the output. Sensor 1 is 29 degrees, sensor 2 is 29 degrees, sensor 3 faulty or disconnected. Well, it's not, it's not there. And sensor 4, there's no such sensor. So that all works pretty well. And waveforms. This is the timing window next to the number one on the right, channel one. You can see that the window opens, it raises the voltage to the sensor. There's a delay of about 50 milliseconds and then the sensor starts generating its pulses. And after a period we close the window, save the count, scale it, etc. And that's the end of that one reading. Sensor is off. And this waveform shows the timing from the start of the sensor pulses to the end of the timing window. That's about 53.6 milliseconds, which allows for the highest temperature. And here's the waveforms for our test all program. You can see 
we measure the first sensor, that's fine. Window closes, we go to the second sensor, that's fine. Window closes. Third sensor, that's fine except it's not there so there are no pulses and we get our error alarm. Then we go to sensor number four, which isn't present, and uh, the error alarm is generated. Now, downloads is last. There's the actual code, the mem map, bit fields, template, a screen script. If you want to run GNU screen to access this, which is what I use, there's a clone of a kernel used on this um, project. The words are listed the README, the sensor PDF. You can run this kernel, hook up some sensors, and um, you can read them straight away using this kernel. You don't actually have to do anything. Uh, hopefully. So this concludes the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And bye for now.